If your car's overheating or takes ages to get warm or your inside heater's not getting hot you might want to consider a coolant flush and a new thermostat to rectify those problems. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do that. This particular vehicle is a Skoda Fabia Mark 1 and the engine is at 1.9 pump juice but the principle is the same for most cars. On many engines they have a, a radiator cap but this one doesn't have that, it has a, an expansion tank. Some have both, but this is the preferred system now. These are the pipes going to the top of the radiator. And you want to be carrying out the coolant change and clean in warm weather on solid ground and not over grass, as you don't want any coolant leaching into the ground. Make sure you do this with the engine cold, take the expansion tank cap off. And as you need to get underneath the car, you need to jack it up at one side slightly. Put your jack on the seam in line with the small arrow on the sill. Ignore the slight rust, I'll have to sort that out sometime. Put my axle stand in for safety. And I'll go underneath the car and take the under tray off. This is held on by a series of T25 screw bolts. Take all those out. They do corrode quite a bit these, so it's a good idea to put some penetrating fluid on if it hasn't been off for quite a while. Slide the tray out from the front and away from the car. You'll need a suitable bowl to drain the coolant into. Don't forget your protective gloves and eyewear. Once you're underneath the car, you want to look for the valve cock near the bottom of the radiator hose. Lots of later cars have these now. If you haven't, you can just take the bottom of the radiator hose off. But these are quite handy. Open the valve and drain all the coolant off. Mine looks in pretty good condition actually, as I only changed it out about four years ago. There's a couple of ways of testing the coolant to see if it's okay, and I'll cover those in another video. But generally, if it's not looking pink, or it's got brown deposits in, it smells a little bit sweet, or hasn't been changed in a long time, over about five years, then consider doing this. It might take some time to drain the fluid out, so you can help it along by squeezing the pipes a little bit. There's still going to be some coolant left in the system, such as the heater core, which you could push out with some compressed air, but that's a bit of a faff to set up, and you're going to flush the system anyway. When you're happy the coolant flow's stopped, turn the valve off. Mine's a little bit murky, but not too bad. If you haven't changed this out for years, then it'll be a lot worse probably. Then you want to find a measuring jug and a receptacle to store it in, which you can later dispose of at a suitable recycling centre. Don't pour this down the drain or onto the soil somewhere, as it's very toxic and poisonous to animals. That's about 4.6 litres. Now we want to take out the thermostat, which is housed on the front side of the engine block. A little bit hard to get to, just behind this pipe. I'm going to use a quarter inch ratchet and hex sockets, 10 and 30 millimeter, with a long and short extension. I'm going to take this bracket off, make it a bit easier to move the pipe out of the way. and take out the vacuum reservoir as well. You'll need a long 8mm Allen key for that. Move it to one side. Here's a closer picture of the thermostat housing, held on by two 10mm bolts or 5mm Allen key. I found I could get the bottom bolt out with a, a long extension between the back of the pipes. Make sure your bowl is underneath. 
and try not to drop the bolt down the engine or it'll just well it'll probably fall out of the bottom anyway the top bolt I found I could just use the wrench Once you've exposed the thermostat, you just need to take the seal out. And then the thermostat just comes out. Like so. And some more coolant will come out of the engine block. Along with a few bits of corroded debris. Another 600 millilitres. Now I want to replace the housing without the thermostat in place. Don't forget to put the seal in first. And tighten that back up. Now you want to fill the system up with the same amount of water that you took out. An ordinary tap water is okay for this because you're just flushing it. And as the system's cold, just bring the level up to the lower mark. Now I'll start the car and run the engine. Turn the heater to hot which will circulate it round the heater matrix. Once it's circulated nicely, then drain out the fluid, which you also want to be disposing of responsibly. The next thing I'm going to use is a, a coolant system cleaner. I'm going to use this by Liquid Molly. It's a Proline version. According to the instructions, this whole can will do 50 litres. So mine's about a tenth of that. So I'm going to put this in with uh, tap water. It says on the instructions that it wants to be a minimum of 10 to 30 minutes. And my level's a little bit high, and that should go down initially when all the galleries are, are full, when I run the engine. As you can see, it's only gone down a bit. I think I'll just take some more out, put my bowl underneath and open the valve a little bit. Just a bit of messing around to get the right level when it's cold, on the lower level. Now I want to bring that up to operating temperature, which will act as a catalyst to get this um, chemical working. So I'll run this between half an hour and an hour. Go put the kettle on and make a brew and let the car cool down. And then drain all that cleaner out. then I'll do two further clean water flushes just to make sure all the cleaner and chemicals are removed with both filling up to the minimum mark heater on run the engine for a short while and then drain off the fluid this is of course the gentle way of flushing the coolant system a more rapid way would be with a horse pipe but I wouldn't recommend that, especially on older engines, as although you want to clean the system out, you have to bear in mind the age of the radiator and the heater matrix. And with your haste, you could actually cause leaks if you're too over-aggressive with the cleaning method. So I would prefer the gentler approach. And when we're happy, when we've got a thoroughly clean system, we can take off the thermostat housing and fit a brand new thermostat. Take the old seal out.
Make sure the seating for the thermostat on the block is free from debris. Then you can either fit the seal and thermostat to the housing and then turn it 90 degrees into the vertical position or put it into the block and put it in the vertical position. Making sure it's correctly fitted. Fit the new seal and wet it slightly with a bit of coolant before you put it in. Then refit the housing. You might need to jiggle it about a little bit to make it seat down nicely. Reinstall the bolts. I like to tighten the bottom one first. And tighten down to the correct torque, making sure it doesn't leak of course. Refit the vacuum reservoir. and the bracket now we can refill the system with the correct coolant and for these engines it's marked on the expansion bottle or should be anyway it's G12 which is a glycol based pink coolant and importantly has uh, anti-corrosion inhibitors in it and depending on whereabouts you live, you need to dilute it with water by the correct amount. It shows you on the back of this bottle the different percentages of dilution, depending on the minimum temperature you want to protect the engine from. And it looks like 60% protects you down to minus 52, 50-50, that's minus 36, and 40% concentration down to minus 24. But you have to bear in mind that the coolant deteriorates over time. So for the majority of applications, 50% concentration is recommended and is the most common dilution. So you must measure it out accurately. Don't be tempted to guess it. And I've got a large measuring jug for this, which should do nicely. If you live in a soft water area, then tap water is fine. As from experience, you don't get a great deal of scale build up, especially if you change it out every five years or so. It's mostly the mineral deposits in the water that are a problem, but you can use distilled or deionized water, which is what I'm going to use. Something to bear in mind is that distilled and deionized water will uh, attract ions from some base metals, such as aluminium and copper, but many fitments are now plastic, which is much less affected by this. And as the glycol antifreeze contains corrosion inhibitors, I'm pretty confident that this will be okay for the engine and cooling system. But if you still prefer tap water, that's fine. It's best to use a, a large funnel for this so you don't spill any on the paintwork as the coolant is ethylene glycol and could actually damage it a little bit. So just have a, a rag available to wipe it off. Bring the coolant level up just above the minimum mark and then start the engine. Turn on the heater. The coolant level will drop slightly as it's filling all the galleries and removing the air. So all you need to do then is just bring it up to the minimum mark with a cold engine. But you're okay if you want to fill it up a bit higher, but I wouldn't recommend filling it up to the maximum level, as if you do have overheating problems later on, it's more likely to vent out boiling coolant. And here's the various stages that I went through, with the original coolant on the far right, the uh, first one here which isn't too bad, it's got a fair pink colour and there's some bits in it obviously but it's not too bad for four years old and then they flush that one out with some clean water, that's the second one third one is with the cleaner and there's some particles at the bottom there so that's done something and then two further clean water flushes and then the final one is the, the new G12 coolant at 50% I'll just put that next to the original coolant.
there is a slight difference there but not much and that's four years but you might see a lot more difference with a lot more corrosion turning it a more brown colour anyway I hope this helped you out guys and cheers bottoms up only kidding whatever you do don't drink it or let any animals near it and as always thank you for watching if you like this video give us a thumbs up I really appreciate that it really does keep me going with the channel to produce more videos and if you haven't already subscribed consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next video